JBN, we keep you informed. Roy Fowl, Father Fowl, King of British Link Hub. Who was he? Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items. Father Fowl, an international crack cocaine king who used the music industry as a front to run a massive drugs empire, was sentenced to 13 years on June 15, 2004. Operating from a modest suburban bungalow in Sudbury, Northwest London, Owen Clark spent a decade flooding the country with possibly hundreds of millions of pounds of the highly addictive narcotic. His sprawling organization ran like a well-ordered business and was one of the biggest in Britain. Clark was caught when a police raid yielded 51 kilograms of cocaine with a street value of £1 million. Two of his accomplices were also jailed. He was believed to have a turnover greater than the gross domestic product of some third world countries and had links with a number of South America's most notorious cartels. One of Father Fowl's trademark was to burn $50 notes. Another was to leave the price tags showing on his $10,000 and stage designer suits. Then there was his love of gold jewelry and his fleet of fast cars. In Jamaica, Clark drove a Jaguar XKA convertible with a personal license plate 007. The diamond encrusted crucifix he wore, he wore on his neck was worth £10,000 and he owned a string of properties in Britain and the Caribbean. He was the head of the British Link Up Crew, an organization that promoted music and dance hall events, both in Britain and Jamaica. He used the group as a front for his drug smuggling activities. In Jamaica, the crew were renowned for their extravagant lifestyles, while their parties attracted celebrities and sports personalities, including Lennox Lewis, as well as a series of criminal figures active in the drug trade between Jamaica and Britain. Clark's drug empire stretched from Britain to the United States, Jamaica, Antigua, and St. Lucia. He recruited a network of 20 mules, many of them Jamaican women, or mistresses who flew regular trips between the US, the Caribbean, and the continent and the UK. Many used the Eurostar to bring in millions of pounds worth of the drug after flying to the continent to avoid detection at Britain's airports. He would reward them with nights in five-star London hotels and the shopping trips, and with paying drugs, not cash, to keep them hooked. Meanwhile, using safe houses in London, his associates would move the shipments of cocaine to all the major cities in the UK on buses and trains. Thirteen of them were jailed for 123 years during a series of court cases across southern England. Captured at the age of 46, it led to the end of the biggest undercover investigation by Operation Trident, which specializes in gun crimes in London's black communities. The operation also involved America's FBI and law enforcement agencies in Jamaica, Antigua, and St. Lucia. The intensive investigations lasted years, spanned continents, and led to more than 30 arrests worldwide. Judge William Kennedy told Clark that his own arrogance and a professional police operation had led to his capture. Those who deal in Class A drugs deal in death, Class A drugs destroy families and ruin lives, Kennedy continued. Those who supply others are responsible indirectly and directly for much of the violent acquisitive crime, which so terrifies decent people and shatters the lives of so many, the judge added. His defense claimed duress and allegations that he had been fitted up by the police. However, a jury of four women and eight men took just four and a half hours to convict him of one count of conspiracy to manufacture crack cocaine, one of supplying it, and two counts of possessing it with intent to supply. The 13-year sentence was later slashed to 11 after he made an appeal. In September 2006, he was slapped with a confiscation order with a threat of four more years in jail if he did not pay up. The courts heard Clark say he made his fortune as a music promoter, but never kept accounts, paid taxes, or opened a bank account. The judge at the confiscation order had ruled that he made £578,403 from his crimes of which just £288,782 was recovered. However, at the criminal appeal court, his lawyers argued that part of the ruling should be overturned as there was no evidence to suggest he owned a house in Jamaica or a valuable Volvo car. 
The judge agreed Clark did not own the car after they considered evidence from its new owner to say he had not transferred the relevant documents at the time of Clark's arrest. Permission to appeal against that part of the judge's findings on the confiscation order was therefore granted, which means Clark had won the permission to challenge the UK's attempt to strip him of his assets. In a 2013 interview after returning home after serving his sentence, Clark said he was happy to be home and that he was impressed that the country was more developed even though the cost of gas was so much higher. When asked what he would change about his past, he said, we couldn't stop sooner, but you know money is a disease, so the more me get, the more me want, and you know exactly what to do. But as me say, no regrets, and life goes on, become a doomy time for the crime. At the time of the interview, he had eight kids, two in England, one in Canada, one in America, and four in Jamaica. At the time of his incarceration, three of these kids did not know him because they were very young when he started to serve his sentence. Clark, when asked what made him remain in it for so many years, he said, the money, the lifestyle, and the girl them. As me said before, the more you get is the more you want. When me set a solid foundation, me build me fence strong because me know say anything can happen as long as you're in the game, he said. When asked how his appearance had not changed after being deported compared to other deportees. He was asked what the Jamaican government needs to change to help its people, he said. This is a third world country, and when it comes to money, the government are going like we, a first world country. So when people have their money, they can spend it freely. They're afraid to bank it, because when they're ready for it, it's a big problem to get it. It seems the government just want the money to stay with the rich people. They now create jobs for poor people, and with the cost of living so high, it's hard for poor people to survive. <laughs>
JBN. We keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.